Greetings to all the brave people of Amazonia. Revolutionary greetings, or should I say liberation greetings, to all the people of the Southern Cameroons. Today is January 20, the year 2022. So we are just 10 days left from the end of the first month of this brand new year about 11 days yes my people i'm delighted to be here again today so that we have this very important exchange on the role the diaspora should play in prosecuting our liberation movement my people it is important that we have this conversation on what role the diaspora has to play and how Ground Zero should connect and operate with our people in the diaspora. There's been a lot of talk on this in the past few days. Since our brother No Piti on the ground decided to rally his folks in Bui County and to make sure everyone will come together so that they break all the fissures among them and work as one team, showing love, concern, and concord for one another. We have had a lot of tongues wagging in the diaspora because suddenly it dawns on us that the power, should I call it power, that we have been wielding is about to leave us. Suddenly it dawns on us that those people that we have been using perhaps like pawns have started to reason. Suddenly we get gripped by fear, fear of the fact that perhaps some of the actions and approaches we engaged in the past may haunt us and may cut us off and cause us to pale in relevance. Let me be very clear here. None of this is true. Why? Because at some point in this movement, we were a selfless people who were focused on just one thing, I mean one thing, and that one thing was making sure that we deliver a free homeland to our people. But, fellow Southern Cameroonians, my dear Amazonians, at some point, we decided to halt and felt that the time had come for us to start struggling to share an elephant that is still in the forest. We decided to halt and decided to start chasing the shadow. We decided to halt and felt that it was already time for us to settle and start governing. From that moment, we got into politics like a normal country. Like every normal country, we got into politics where you have a government or governments and opposition. And consequent on that, we spent our time trying to do politics. And without knowing, or maybe even intentionally, we carried this onto ground zero. Where people are not only battling with ideas, where people are not only battling with thoughts, where people are battling with strong things in their hands. And of course, we know what a lot of this resorted to. Today, more than ever before, my people, the call for synergy, for concord, for understanding, for unity of purpose that has been ringing in the diaspora over and over and over has been decoded on ground zero. And rather than copy, Rather than admire, rather than promote it, rather than put in our all. What are we doing? What have we done? We sit and we start the name tagging. The name calling. We start the tagging. The name calling. On to ground zero just as we have been using against ourselves here. Because here in the diaspora, if you are not for me, you are not only against me, but you are with an agent of, of La Republic. This is what it has been. But fortunately enough, our brave hearts 
have come to a clear understanding of what their roadmap is, to a clear understanding of what their real mission is, to a clear understanding of where our journey stands and of what the destination is. And that is why today they have decided to close their ears and reorganize. And we are ranting. I will get into that, my people. This is what I should say this, to make us understand clearly the moment in which we are right now, to understand the circumstances of our liberation movement right now, I'm going to make recourse to a lot of men and women of wisdom so that by hearing them and picking what they say, and seeing how it makes sense in our movement, we can begin to look at things differently. That is why, my people, i like us to take a look at this. Malcolm X says, A man who stands for nothing will fall for nothing. This is a very strong statement. It may be just a few words, but it's a very strong statement. This is, it falls within the level of ease and worse. It's not the usual low frequency or the characteristic bombastic language that you feel that he who is too learned has to use for you to have the feeling that this is an educated man talking. No. A man who stands for nothing will fall for nothing. Look, this has been seriously proven. In our movement, there is too much cacophony, especially in the diaspora, because a lot of our people just got up from sleep and found before them a liberation movement they were condemned to become a part of. And too often, a lot of us never found time to study exactly what we are getting involved in. A lot of us never found time to read a bit on how it happened elsewhere and with what results. A lot of us never found time to understand that this is not something that is going to be a matter of one plus one equals two. And that by and that is not something that by the next day will be achieved, but that this is something that we have to work and work and work. Like the late Nelson Mandela says, it is actually a long walk to freedom that had to be a long haul consequent on that a good lot of us got into this thing really not know exactly what we stand for were you coming in to stand for the flag or you're coming in to stand for someone for some individual or coming in to support a group this confusion made quite some people, and there are a lot of us in this movement, who finally didn't know exactly what we are standing for. And that is why we ended up, or we have ended up falling quickly for every other thing that has come before us. Quite some of us have already fallen along the road into the hands of the Republic. True. Look at So Foncha. Remember his rhetoric yesterday? What is he saying today? That tells you that this is someone who never knew what he was standing for. Yeah. There is another one who was calling himself State House Press Secretary. His name is just darting off my mind. I don't know the name. Keeps coming and going. He said he was, uh, uh, did he say he was a psychiatrist or doctor of something in that light. Ngo Santos, that's the name. Where is he today? That somebody was right at the level of what you call that... If, I mean, it's in a normal country, he'll say he was seated next to, uh, I mean, the leader of the group that he belonged to. That tells you that it is the height of confidence. But where does he stand today? This is simply because a good lot of us got into this movement standing for nothing. That is the problem. And that is why 
we find ourselves at the crossroads at which we are today. Confused and everything. Because we didn't recognize that there is a difference, a clear difference, between fighting for a country and fighting for an individual and, or, and fighting for a group. When you confuse all of these things, you will end up destroying or having no motion. That is, doing so much work, fighting hard, thinking that you are doing something. But the economists will say, it is on productive level. That's labor without gain. It is important for us to take time and know exactly what we are involved in. When we do, we will know what we want to stand for. We will determine very easily whether we want to stand for the flag or want to stand for individuals, regardless of where their brains or ideas are tilting, or want to stand for groups just for the sake of standing for groups. When we make this distinction, it will help us to determine where we want to go. And that brings me here. Because my people, I have been one of the most persecuted in this movement, right from the start. One of the most understood, right, one of the most misunderstood, I beg your pardon, right from the start. Why? Because all the time I decided that I'm going to be me as I am. And I said, you can beat me or jail me or even kill me, but I'm not going to be what you want me to be. Listen, when Steve Biko made this statement, he had these kind of situations in mind where you find yourself locked in a battle of your life and the majority appear to be tilting towards one direction a direction you see clearly and you know that this route that is being taken is leading to nowhere oh what will happen is no matter how loud you shout how much you cry you will be beaten the only difference that you will make will be whether you bend to follow the majority towards, I mean, a path that leads to nowhere or continue screaming until one by one the people begin to understand that the path that has been embraced is not the right path. Look, when I say this, some people say you are trying to proclaim self-righteousness. Far from that, no. I'm not alone in this particular situation. There are too many of us in this movement, in this particular situation, who have been chastised, who have been insulted, who have been, you know, given all kinds of names, simply because we decided to remain who we are. Simply because we decided to say it is right sometimes to stand alone, not especially with the crowds. I don't want to call it the madding crowds, no. Because like I said a while ago, we got up one morning and we were surprised by what we have before us. No one went to school to study this. But today we're in. The least we need to do is to have our minds and hearts open enough to reason with others. To accommodate contrary views and find time to sit down and examine these views and see how they help. Or can be modified in moving us forward. I say this because more and more we bear in mind that without the diaspora, this liberation movement is doomed to fail. What is my position on that? I will say yes and no. Yes, without the diaspora, this movement is going to face a lot of difficulties. Because in the diaspora, we have a specific role to play that only we in the diaspora can play. And on the ground, on ground zero, the actors on ground zero have a specific role that only they can play. But mind you, if they on ground zero today decide to end this liberation movement, it's very easy. We can't easily do that 
in the diaspora. That's why I said yes and no. And the statistics that have been presented to us today are clear and speak for themselves. That almost 70% of the resources used to prosecute the struggle on Ground Zero comes from Ground Zero. Just about 30% comes in from the diaspora. But my people, let's be very clear. In the diaspora, we have the possibility to turn this around, which means up to about 80% or even 90 comes from the diaspora and the rest from ground zero. And there will be greater sanity in the entire movement if this reversal were to happen. But why has it not happened? Because of greed. Because of avarice. Because a good lot of us do not know what we stand for. If we did, we would seek for greater organization. We would seek for clarity. We would seek for greater synergy. Because that will help us harness the scarce resources that we have to help us fuel our movement to freedom. And this is absolutely important. And again, there are some people, I go back here, who have chastised me from back home. Mr. Akura, are you crazy? Look at these stupid actions that you take. You leave your wonderful job, you leave your investments, your everything, and you go to be chasing the shadow. And you go getting involved in something that will take you nowhere. You go engage in something which even has no organization that is doomed to fail. And again, my response to them has been this quote by Steve Biko. That I am going to be who I am. And you can beat me or jail me or even kill me. But I'm not going to be what you want me to be. Why? Because I know what I stand for. I stand for freedom. I stand for justice. I stand for what will benefit a greater majority of humanity. Not just myself. And I know millions of us in Southern Cameroon think the same way. Millions of us in Southern Cameroon, in Ambazonia, believe the same way. The only thing we need to do is to coordinate our ideas so that we easily get to where we want to get to. And now let me prove to you that those who don't know what they stand for definitely are standing for nothing and cannot be taken for anything. Take a look at this. I got up two days ago to this uh, press release from Mr. Okalia Bilai Bernard, the colonial governor for the Southern Zone. They call it Southwest. This is the same man who in 2017 told the people referring to us how to serve Cameroonians, oh, you are dogs. This is the same man. Today, take a read at this press release. And I'm asking those, my brothers and sisters back home, who have the habit of telling me you were stupid by getting into what you got to. And I want to ask them, are you dignified by press releases like this? I'd rather be a wretched free man than be a rich slave. Because Okaya Bilai Bernard here in this press release is reminding everybody there, mother and father, babies and adults alike, everyone is mixed in. University professor for what, whoever, he doesn't care. He refers to all of them in this press release as people who have to make it a duty and not just a duty, it's obligatory to go out there to the field of play and cheer players in Victoria. Whether they know what team is playing or not, whether they had a desire to do that or not, they are obligated to. Because he says the measure taken by the Prime Minister at the behest of the President of the Republic is not for people to 
leave work at 2 p.m. and have extra time to carry out their other leisure activities or socio-economic activities. It's for you to go to the field of play. And he calls on the divisional officers, senior divisional officers, regional delegates, I mean, general managers, and all or not, to implement. What does that mean to implement here? The answer to that question lies in the, in the release issued by the mayor of Boya. Lies in roll calls. So you will find yourself a university professor going to stand on the line for names to be read. Uh, professor Martin E. President, sir, get into the bus. Uh, Dr. Sylvia B. President, sir, get into the bus. This is what they call the tingification of people. By this single act, you have been reduced to rubble, to an object. To an object. And why you are being reduced to that object? I'm sitting here with my shoulders very high. Between you and I, you begin asking yourself the fundamental question. Who made the wrong decision? And this is simply because you don't even know what you stand for. Because you have not determined where you are going. And this is yet another one. We tell people when someone shows or tells you who they are, believe them the first time. Don't always think that no, somewhere along the line they will change. Experience has shown that they scarcely change. Even when they come across as having changed, they are being coy. It is for a purpose. It is to achieve a specific objective. After which, they will go back to their reserves. So when I see some people, like the ballast and all are not screaming, that a team captain say, I don't speak English, I'm walking off the uh, press during these very sensitive times. Wow. I say, why, wh wh what? Abu Bakr Vincent is just being himself. He's not different from Paul Bia. No. He's not different from Jacques Femin Dongo. No. He's not different, I mean, from any of those persons. Abu Bakr Vincent was just a prototype of the system we have been talking about. Just a prototype of the system we have been fighting against. A prototype of the system we are doing everything to stay away from. So when you consciously determine that no, I'll say, then the next minute, you are crying and weeping. Again, I say, you don't know what you stand for. And that is why you fall for anything that comes before you. That's why you easily fall for something called special status, the content of which you don't know. That's why you easily fall for something called house of chiefs. What importance does it have? We even have the president of one of those houses of chiefs missing and nobody cares. That's why you easily fall for something called regional assemblies, where you can't even have the possibility to determine where a project will be located. Because you stand for nothing. That's why you fall for everything that comes your way. My people, when we will graduate from this, it will help us to get to where we intend to get to. And take a look at this. It's almost in the same rooms. I get up and I see one of our brothers so touched by some of the declarations that the former U.S. Undersecretary for African Affairs at the Bureau of African Affairs at the U.S. State Department, Mr. Tibonagi said, and he comes to say, it is never too late to do something as long as you have a breath of life in you. At Tibonagi Jr., what are you doing now as a fellow human being to end the suffering? Of course, the humble man he is comes and replies, waiting, that's right down here, waiting for the Cameroonian Anglophone diaspora to show some unity in how they want to move forward. Oh my goodness. 
the same things. The same things. Ambassador Tibo Nagi is not the first to say this. We heard this from PLO Lumumba. Professor PLO Lumumba came right in our midst, participated in the town hall, showed up at our conferences, at our meetings, came even in private Zoom sessions with us and told us, people of Southern Cameroons, the African brothers and sisters are watching and want to come in to support your movement, like they did with South Africa, like they did in Namibia. But we are confused because if you come and stand with one group, the other ones will bash you. If you stand with the ones bashing you, the one that you just left will name you and things like that. But the continent is watching and waiting on you people to do the needful. Create some synergy. Make it easy for Herb to come your way. That was from PLO, Professor PLO Lumumba. He's not white. We heard the same thing from Ambassador Ari, uh, Arikana, Chiyombori Kua. We heard the same thing and even insulted journalist Tinsley. We heard the same thing even from Ambassador Cohen and gave him names. Several international figures have come to us and each time they say the same thing. But when it doesn't suit us because we want to force it down their throats that no, we have a group that is that has succeeded in you know, breaking down everybody so deal with us or no, we, we even have a government, we even have a this None of them has swallowed this because the situation before their eyes tells them a different story. We have heard it from every other actor. The other day, Comrade Chris Anu was with a British MP on his platform and she said the very same thing. But now, shockingly enough, this is what this tweet replied by... Ambassador Tibo Nagi harvested from one of us. I hate sometimes to directly address some of our people, but when it gets to this height, I go back quickly to being back who I am. Look, when I read this tweet from Kemita Ashu, replying to this reply by Ambassador Tibo Nagi, Go try cool plotters. You forget that God has a last say and Bazonia will decide their fate and they know what they want. We are united in purpose. We want total independence. No weapon fashion against the people of Ambazonia shall prosper and the people shall all say amen. Now look at this. Go try cool plotters. So by the mere fact of saying Southern Cameroonians in the diaspora should organize themselves, should synergize in order to quickly attract assistance. Ambassador, Ambassador Tibo Nagi becomes a coup plotter. Plotting coup against who? What are we? What quantity are we that will warrant people of his stature to come down to plot a coup against us? This just reminds me of this wonderful African proverb that when the gods want to send or when the gods want to destroy a man or want to destroy someone, they first of all send them mad. Because it is madness that will cause us to be thinking in this kind of fashion. Absolute madness. It is the same madness that is causing some of us to begin addressing the most looked for person among us today who even has a ransom of 200 million in CFA franc dangling over his head. I'm referring to Brother Nopiti. That we, some of us, even have the guts to refer to him as an agent of La Republic. With all what we have seen him do, not what we have heard him say. 
simply because he has said it is time to face the flag. It is time to look up only to the flag and not to groups and not be part of the hegemonic fight. Listen, it takes me to get into this statement by Malcolm X here, who says, a wise man can play the part of a clown, but the clowns can't play the part of a wise man. I don't know if this makes some sense to any one of us. A wise man can play the part of a clown, but a clown cannot play the part of a wise man. Conventional wisdom requires that we, the people of the Southern Cameroons, understand that we cannot do this all by ourselves. We will need help. We will need help. Yes, we need help. And that is why we are engaged seriously in diplomatic outreach. If we didn't need that help, then we don't need diplomatic outreach. Get back to what uh, Kemita says. Ambazonians will decide their fate and they know what they want. We are not saying anyone should decide our fate for us. But we need to coordinate efforts, energy, contributions, ideas from all over to get to where we want to get to. Don't forget, the people of Somaliland took their destiny into their hands. They did what they did. They are actually self-governing right now. But they still need the rest of the international community to fully recognize them. The people of Southern Sudan took their destiny into their hands. But they still needed the intervention of the international community to ensure that they got what they wanted. Their freedom from Sudan. The people of the Eritrea went the same way. It took 30 years. It required the intervention of the rest of the world. The people of East Timor, same way. People of Namibia, same way. Even in South Africa, same way. My people, let us not just use words because they come onto our lips. We should weigh them. That is why I'm agreeing with Malcolm X. That a wise man can play the, the role of a clown. But the clown cannot play the role of a wise man. It is important for us to note that we, as a people, will only make it when we decide to make our brains work for us. It is only by making our brains work for us, my people of the Southern Cameroons, that we will be able to attain our objective briefly. I got up today, seeing videos of Comrade No Pity and his group in full ecstasy, in excitement, and telling the world that Bree County is liberated. Telling the world that here we stand and speak courageously on our land. I heard these bold words reminding us in the diaspora that those of us who continue to even address him and his folks, infiltrators or agents of La Republic, will be put to shame by their actions. Do they just talk? They walk the walk. When they talk, they talk. They talk the talk and they walk the walk. They don't just talk. They are acting. And what do we do? We excel at throwing stones at each other. That is definitely not going to take us where we intend to go. This is why I like to say here that the true value of a human being can be found in the degree to which he has attained liberation from the South. Because right now, most of us in the diaspora, in the Southern Cameroons, we have been captured by our egos. We have been captured by our thirst for power. 
we have been captured by our unquenching thirst for illicit wealth. We have been captured by all of these things. And because of that, we have stopped, I mean stopped, working in the interest of our liberation movement. We are now serving our egos, serving our thirsts. We are now serving mainly us. And that is why we see the actions of our brave hearts in coming together, which is something that we yearn for. And we start by fighting it. I saw the local communities in Noni when my brother fly over stood there to talk. I saw excitement in their faces to hear these their sons, whom from day one they used to say our boys. And at some point they, they started saying those boys, those children. I heard them once more addressing them as our boys. Because they were excited that these children could stand before them, look at them eyeball to eyeball and tell them we are sorry. If we hurt you yesterday, we are sorry. If we did something the wrong way, which is not the way we ought to do it, we are sorry. If we did not understand that we needed to work with you, to take care of you, to make sure that we have a very good working relationship, we are sorry. Beginning today, we are turning a new leaf. The excitement was unimaginable. And I could see the, the members of the local community coming up to testify. They were excited at this unity. Because this unity spelled better days. Not the days where because you cooperated with A, B will attack you. Because you, you cooperated with C, D will be against you. That is the spirit we have been praying for. How on earth do you pray for something and wish something else to happen? This is why I'm raising this. Because we need to understand where we stand in the diaspora. What is our role? Look, when we say these things, talk, 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 we turn around quickly and say this struggle is God-ordained. Of course, my sister Kimita just said that there a while ago. This struggle is God-ordained. And each and every one of us, in whatever we are doing, it is God that assigned us to do what we are doing. And that's why I couldn't agree more with Susan and Tony, who says, I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do. Because I notice it always coincides with their own desires. And this is a fact. Very important fact. Because all the time, it is God that has assigned us to do the thing that we are doing. All the time, it is God who picked us and placed us where we are. So we are just doing his will. But by our actions, it is not that will that we are doing. Because by our actions, we absolutely end up doing things contrary to what we have to expect as results. That's why I couldn't agree more with Susan Anthony. Look, my people, the role of the diaspora has to be that of doing diplomatic outreach. The role of the diaspora has to be that of ensuring diplomatic outreach. If we come to the firm conviction that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor, it must be demanded by the oppressed, as Martin Luther King Jr. says, then we should be able to settle down, to organize ourselves, to better attain that objective. And to do that, we must sit down in the diaspora and tell ourselves that there is a role we have to play. That role is ensuring diplomatic outreach. That role is making sure we have demonstrations almost on a daily basis. If we can, if we can do that, but if we can't do it on a daily basis, we do that even at least on a weekly or, you know, bi-monthly bi -monthly basis. In some part of the world, 
Amazonians, Southern Cameroonians should be demonstrating every time, be it before a diplomatic mission, be it before an international organization, be it wherever, we have to be in that motion. That is our role. Our role, again, is to make sure we put together the necessary resources, the necessary resources to help the people on the ground who are facing the situation live so that they are able to play their own part. A kind of division of labor and specialization. The people on the ground cannot come to the diaspora to tell us how we organize ourselves. That won't happen. They will not come to the diaspora to dictate who is who. To dictate who will be leader of which group or who will be what. They can't do that. Why do we think we should be the ones to go there and tell them, no, you stay here, that one should be your boss. And too often we have not even seen any of them anywhere, physically before. We've never met any of them. We've only met either on a, on a Zoom call, on a, a, a video call, or, you know, or simply just talked. We never met any of them. We don't know them. We don't know their specific capabilities, each and every one of them, better than they do. They will sit together. That is why it makes sense for us to understand that our role should simply be to provide, contribute ideas, tell them how we feel things should happen, and listen to them tell us how they think they can implement those ideas that we share with them. And then they organize themselves. We organize ourselves. We build that strong partnership. Listen, when the bridge was built between Ground Zero and the Diaspora in 2017, it was for us to be able to, with time, define a specific way of making this partnership more gainful. It is delusional. I mean delusional. For us to sit in the diaspora and imagine that the people on Ground Zero should never organize themselves until that day when some space will be created for some of us to leave the diaspora and go there and then sit there and start organizing them and start giving them instructions. I don't want to say that that is stupid. I want to say we should recognize by ourselves that that is absolutely unrealistic. I heard them say clear, when everything will be done, when the land is liberated, we will all find ourselves in our free country. People who want power will compete for power. Political parties will exist. People will belong to political parties, craft political programs, present them to the people and get elected into positions. Now, like Congress Cho Ayaba has a habit of saying, this is a liberation phase. Now, like several other actors in this movement say, it is the liberation phase. The elephant is still in the forest. I heard Sisiko Ayuk Tabe Julius saying this. My brothers and sisters of the Southern Cameroons, we should understand that the only way for us to get results is to let people organize themselves. While our brethren on ground zero are organizing themselves, we should also have the opportunity to organize ourselves. There is a fallacy in the diaspora that has made it difficult for us to come to a clear understanding of how we have to work. That fallacy has been that those who have boots on the ground are the people who should talk. How many people do you know who have boots on the ground who are not even in any of the frontline movements? Do you know? How many people do you know who have real power of control and all or not on those boots that you are talking about, but who are not in any position in any of the movements called frontline? Do you know? This is why I adhere to this idea. Baga says, bombs and pistols do not make a revolution. The sort of revolution is sharpened on the waiting stone of ideas. Take note of this. Bombs and pistols do not make a revolution. The sort of revolution is sharpened on the wetting stone of ideas. 
a clear understanding of this will inform us that the leadership of the South Sudanese freedom movement was not based abroad. Based abroad. No, they were not. The same thing with, Ethio with uh, Eritrea. The same thing with East Timor. Even the apartheid movement in South Africa was not fought by leadership based abroad. But in each of these cases, they had a strong diaspora that raised funds unlimited. I've met people in the United States of America who are of Eritrean origin. And they tell me how they used to, every, how they often, Every two months, raise close to $1.6 to $2 million to support their people on the ground. To support their people on the ground. And they went to every authority they could ever imagine in the diaspora to stomp for this. Finally, they got favor from the evangelicals. And when the evangelicals set in, in the United States of America and elsewhere in, in, in the Western world, things began to change. So that diaspora played the role of the catalyst by doing diplomatic outreach. While those who were on the ground in Eritrea did the heavyweight lifting that ought to be done on the ground. It is the same thing with South Sudan. The same thing with East Timor. My people of the Southern Cameroons, the situation of Ambazonia is peculiar. Peculiar with respect to the fact that at the time this movement started, nobody was ready for a full-fledged liberation movement. The SCNC had been around with Scapo, with the Republic of Ambazonia doing a good lot of things. Sensitizing the people, I can remember Pam Fongalan for writing articles on a weekly basis that were published by various English language news outlets. I worked on those articles on a weekly basis, sensitizing the people. They even carried out censuses, they even carried out signature petitions and all of those things to prepare the people. By 2016, that the consortium is birthed, the ground was getting ready. The few months that they did sensitization left and right, the ground was ready. Fields were white and harvest ready. But given the brutality that we witnessed on the ground, it made sense to temporarily, immediately transfer power abroad. Exactly what we did on January 17, 2017, to make it complicated and impossible for La Republic du Cameroon to halt our movement. But our diaspora simply misunderstood this whole thing. We, because some of us who were on the ground eventually came to the diaspora. And today, we are on the side of the diaspora. So when I say this, I'm not discounting myself. We are all involved. We simply misunderstood the whole thing to mean governance from abroad. Whereas the role of the diaspora has to be that of mobilizing resources, Carrying out serious diplomatic outreach, making sure that the efforts of our people on the ground demonstrated every day through a resilient kind of resistance should pay off. Because everything will end on the negotiation table. That is why Varasint is clear bombs and pistols do not make a revolution. The sort of revolution is sharpened on the wetting stone of ideas. This tells us that there is no actor in this movement that is useless. Everybody in this movement has a role to play. And it is when we begin recognizing this role that we will be on the right path towards achieving our objective and as fast as we wish it achieved. To all of us, in the diaspora, let's bear, let's go the way of let Nelson Mandela. Let us work and allow the people to appreciate us so that someday we'll say like him, 
that when a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. When a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. And he says, I believe I have made that effort. And that is therefore why I will sleep for eternity. In our case today, we are involved in self-gratification. The reign of I, 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 I is the problem here. We are locked in a situation where it is we, we, we that will take us to the promised land. We must begin to understand that. And I listened again to our brother Nopiti and he made clear. It is not an attempt to sever links with the diaspora no, it's an attempt to get better organized so that they who are facing the heat on a daily basis can get better protected and can stand a better chance of handing us the golden fleece, which is freedom. Can you send an athlete to go and bring a medal? And when it's about to take off, when they sell your mark set, go. You pull the chain on his leg. While others are running, you'll be standing on the spot. There will be a lot of movement, but no motion. My people, let us recognize this. I want to congratulate all those who have organized themselves in little groups left and right to mobilize resources to support this initiative so that the various groups that are already planning to stifle them of the much needed finances in, in, so that they can use the economy factor to force them to get back to the disorganization we declared yesterday will not succeed. Quite some of you have channeled resources through the Ambassador Relief Fund. Congratulations. Thank you. We are making sure it gets to where it has to get to. Quite some of you are channeling resources. We will make sure those who are sick, those who have, have, have issues and, and all or not, those who need food should have that food. But most especially, I encourage each and every one of us, organize yourselves as best you can. Give them the necessary support. I am looking forward to the replication of that action in all 13 counties. I heard the season calling him the father of the Marines, the father of Ngokotunja. They now refer to him, they, not even himself, refer to him as the father of Northwest. I hate to say Northwest, but that is what they are using as father of Northwest. If they are doing that by themselves, out of love, excitement, and understanding of his motive, of his selflessness, that to me is excellent. So that initiative needs to be replicated everywhere. And as soon as that is done, that organization we have been seeking will be in place. It is time for us in the diaspora to rise from the ashes of the disagreements, the internecine wranglings and quarreling that is going on now, to also get organized so that we can get respected. It is not because other movements before us were not too organized, too united, that we should do the same. Times change. And people's perceptions of things change. Therefore, the way of doing things also changes. Children born in 1980 are not the same. They don't behave the same like children born in 1990. Nor would those behave the same like children born in the 2000s, in the Android age. That is why we have to recognize that, that as the, the times evolve, things evolve. We shouldn't try to think that things will remain the same. I want to close this conversation by saying, and by agreeing with Silva, with Silvia Rivera, that we have to be visible. We should not be ashamed of who we are. We have to be visible. 
it is a long time since the last saw Amazonians, Southern Cameroonians, with a blue and white in the streets of anywhere in the world. My people, people have come out of the COVID scare. A lot of things are beginning to happen. People are developing approaches, new ideas on how to go about things. It is time we to think out of the box so that we can get to where we have to get to. This is my submission. This is my plea. My people, I know we are capable of doing it. I know we are capable of building these bridges and ensuring that both the diaspora and Ground Zero will work in tandem. My people, I know we are capable of mobilizing the necessary resources to fuel this newfound synergy, concord, and unity on Ground Zero. I know we have the faculty to facilitate the same transformation in the diaspora. Let us not only complain, let us not only worry, let us graduate from speeches and resolutions to action. It is time to act, and only action will take us there. To God be the glory.